The statue of David by Michelangelo is a great example for the incredible things that have done in the Renaissance period. And also, I have no idea how Michelangelo made this statue and the level of patience that he had to finish this statue of David. So today I'm going to visit Florence Academia Gallery with the 5 star tour guide so I can make my mind free after asking 10 curious questions from the guide. Coming up, my name is Asanga and Francesca is the local 5 star tour guide who is going to show me Florence Academia Gallery today. Buongiorno, it's a pleasure to meet you. Now we'll go to collect the tickets and then we can get in the museum. Yeah, let's go. Actually, we could avoid long, long waiting lines since we have skipped the line tickets. Check the link below to skip the line tickets. Question number one. Uh, why it's called Galleria dell'Accademia? Because it was founded together with the Academia. When I say Academia, of course I mean the Academy of Fine Arts. The art school that still exists and it's the building next door. Still works as a school with lots of students going there to study from all over the world. Okay. Both the Academia and the Gallery of the Academia were founded in 1784 by Peter Leopold of Lorraine, the Grand Duke of Tuscany. And actually, he founded this museum, the Gallery of the Academia, in order to collect in here and display all the artworks belonging to the Academy, so that the students, they could come in here, take a look at the artworks, and get the inspiration to create something new. Wow. That's how you yeah, so you see at the beginning the museum was founded for the students and yeah. only for the students because they were the only ones who were allowed to come in the museum and to see the artworks. Okay. Yeah. Everything changed when the staff of the museum came here and of course we're talking of Michelangelo Stephen. <laughs> okay. Excellent. See. When David came here, uh, the museum was changed because first of all, it was made accessible to everybody. At that point, it was no longer for students. Secondly, more statues by Michelangelo were brought in here to create a museum dedicated to Michelangelo. Okay, so that's why this museum, we won't see just the David yes. made by Michelangelo. We have seven original statues by Michelangelo in this museum. Ooh. And we'll see them in the part dedicated to Michelangelo. All right. It's really interesting to uh, know this story. Let's move to the second. Question number two. Uh, why musical instruments are here? Because the building next door is the conservatory. Okay, so on one side we have the Academy of Fine Arts, on the other side you have the conservatory. It's a very intense street. <laughs> and all the musical instruments displayed here, they all belong to, to the conservatory, which is the building next door. Okay. Okay. You can see very important musical instruments, for example, this tenor viola, which is an original Stradivarius musical instrument wow. made by Antonio Stradivari, the famous instrument maker from Cremona, and it was part of the quintet of string instruments that were donated to the Medici family. As a matter of fact, you can still see the Medici coat of arms made of mother of pearl. Okay, this logo in the middle. Exactly, that's the one. Okay. Then we have another important section in this museum, which is the one of the keyboard instruments. Because, I don't know if you know it, but actually it was here in Florence that the first piano was ever invented. It was an invention by Bartolomeo Cristofori, who was working at the service of the Medici family, of course. He invented this keyboard instrument so that makes sounds by striking strings with hammers and not by plucking strings like the harpsichord. That's the difference. And if the player strikes the keys harder, the sound is louder. If he strikes the keys softer, even the sound is softer. That's why we call it piano forte, soft and loud. Okay. Question number three. Why you can see some black dots on these statues? Well, because again, this is not marble. These are again plaster models that were used to create marble statues. Okay. okay. So what happened? Some tools with nails were driven into the plaster models, so then the distance between the nails was measured yeah. and it was copied on the marble. Oh, right. Okay, that's how they would create marble statues in the 1800s. Mm, because okay. these are all plaster models by uh, Lorenzo Bartolini and Luigi Pampaloni. Lorenzo Bartolini was a professor of the Academy of Fine Arts in the 1800s. Okay. Luigi Pampaloni was his disciple. Okay. For example, uh, the busts 
that you see over there, these are yeah. funerary portraits okay. of uh, English people, Russian people that came to live to Florence in the 1800s. Okay. Okay, so you would see the original marble statues on their tombs. Okay. Okay. And for example, over there we have another famous guy. That one is Machiavelli. Machiavelli. See, the famous politician who wrote the prince. He was originally from Florence. Okay. okay. You can see the original marble statue in the courtyard of the Uffizi Gallery, oh, right. together with the statues of other Tuscan men of the past. Okay. Uh, another two famous guys are these two here. Yeah. Uh, you can see the original marble statues facing one of the sides of the cathedral okay. because that one is Arnolfo di Cambio. Arnolfo di Cambio is looking ahead, so it's looking at the cathedral because okay. he was the architect who started the construction of the cathedral in 1296. Oh. Okay. That's right. The other one is Brunelleschi and is looking up because he's looking at the dome. He was the architect who built the dome of the cathedral in 1436. Oh, that was Brunelleschi. Yes. Oh, cool. Question number four. <coughs> is this statue by Michelangelo? <coughs> no. <laughs> It's not a statue by Michelangelo. This is the Rape of the Sabine Women made by Giambologna, another sculptor of the 1500s. So it's not by Michelangelo, but you will see that it's still connected somehow to Michelangelo because, as a matter of fact, this is not the real marble statue. This is just the model made out of plaster that the sculptor made before the marble statue. Okay. And Gian Bologna, he was not the only one making the plaster first. They were all making the plaster first, actually, because the marble was very expensive. Okay, so that time nobody dared to work directly with the marble. They were always making the plaster first. They were always making the full-scale plaster because they needed to get all the measurements to copy them on the marble. That's how he was working when making the statue. Okay. And the other thing that was very normal was that, uh, you know, the, the teacher, the master of the workshop, as you can imagine, he was very busy because he was working on many statues at the same time. Okay. So, in most of the cases, the teacher, he would only make the first one, the plaster, and then the marble statue was made by the students. Oh, really? By the assistants on the basis of model. Of course the teacher was always there supervising, getting the final details, but this way if they had like an army of students working for them they could get more commissions and get more money. <laughs> then the teacher just put the signature in there. Wow. Okay. So that was the process for making a statue, generally speaking. As for Michelangelo, as you can imagine it was a bit different. Okay. And soon we'll be able to see how it was different. Okay. Question number five. Are these uh, plaster models by Michelangelo? No. <laughs> I mean, this is all by Michelangelo, but it's not plaster. Okay, you really? see it rough uh, because it's marble that was left unfinished. Okay. okay, all these touches, they were all meant to be finished, but something happened. For example, in the case of this one, this is Saint Matthew, one of the twelve apostles. Michelangelo was making this one to decorate the interior of our cathedral, the Duomo of Florence. And actually, he was supposed to make not only this one, but even the other eleven apostles. Then what happened? The Pope called Michelangelo to go to Rome to work for him. He went home. Yeah, so you know, when the Pope summons you, you need to go immediately. Okay, so that's why Michelangelo quit the job and left this statue unfinished. But that's good for us, because looking at this one, we can try to see how Michelangelo was working. Okay, Michelangelo, he was quite different from the others. We saw what the others were doing in the other room. And they were all exactly the full scale plaster to get all the measurements. Nobody dared to work directly with the marble. Nobody except yeah. Michelangelo. It's okay. uh, really hard to do. See, everybody was gifted, of course. Michelangelo, uh, sometimes even Michelangelo made statues, made models. Okay, but if he made models, they were not full scale, not big. Okay, he only made small models just to get an idea but not to get the measurements 
didn't need to get the measurements. When he had the uh, when he had a piece of marble, he would just stand for a while in front of it, just looking at it, until he was able to see the statue within it. At that point, he just took away the image. Okay. When he was talking about his job, he always said, in my job, I don't create anything. It's my job is one of subtraction. He believed the statue was already inside the piece of marble. He believed that God had put the artwork inside the, and then God had given the sculptor the gift to be able to recognize it. Okay, so once Michelangelo had seen the statue within the piece of marble, he just let the statue emerge from the marble yeah. as a body emerging from water. Yeah. Looking at some Matthew, you can see that this seems like a body coming out from the yeah. And so that's why it was different from the others. Yeah. Then the other reason is that uh, even Michelangelo had some students. But he used them to clean his studio, to prepare his meals, not to work. <laughs> okay. So to do his work. Yeah. Uh, only for the small details, for the things that he considered so important, he let the students do something. Okay. But not for the most important things, uh, for example, not for the day. Yeah. In that case, he worked on his own. Okay, so next we are going to see David. Right now we are in front of Statue of David here and question number six, uh, why David is so big? Well, it had to be that big, otherwise nobody would have seen it up there where it was supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, the story of this famous David starts uh, at the beginning of the 1500s, 1501. At that point, our cathedral, the Duomo of Florence, yeah. is almost complete. But some things can still be added to it to decorate it. Okay. Okay. That's the reason why the Opera del Duomo, which is the society that oversees the works, they decide to create a statue to decorate the external upper part of the cathedral. A statue that was supposed to be placed up high, almost at the top of the Duomo, on one of the small domes surrounding the big dome of the cathedral. Interest. The subject of that statue was supposed to be the David and the sculptor supposed to create the statue was Michelangelo. Okay, that's how everything started. Then what happened? When the statue was eventually revealed after only three years, okay. everybody realized that it would have been a, a waste wouldn't need to put it so high. It would have been impossible to see all those beautiful details that Michelangelo created from the distance. Yeah. Okay. Then it would have been even complicated to put it so high. Because the is really big. See, uh, so it would have been difficult to see the details yeah. and it would have been complicated to put it so high because David weighs five tons. Oh. Okay. It would have been very difficult to put it so high. So for all these reasons he was never used for the Duomo. So in the end that sorry David never made it to the top of the Duomo. But that's the reason why it had to be so big originally. Okay. Sounds interesting. So we'll go to the next one. So question number seven. Why did they want David and who is David? David is a character from the Bible, from Bible. the Old Testament. He's the famous King David, one of the ancestors of Jesus. But actually that's before, before he becomes king. Uh, at this point of the story, David is just a young boy, a young shepherd of the Bible, who defeats the greatest hero of the Philistines, and we're talking of Goliath. 
giant Goliath. David defeats Goliath using no other weapon than a sling, a slingshot, which okay. is the thing that is holding in the left hand. That's the okay. okay. Then he uses his brain, of course, because he understands that he needs to hit with the rock the sling, the head, the forehead of the giant. This way what happens? The giant falls down and David cuts off his head using Goliath's sword. Oh, that's the story behind See, uh, that's okay. the story we in the Bible. Okay. Now, if you look at the body of this David, you can see that actually there is something that might seem a bit wrong, not perfect. Yeah. And we're talking especially of the hands. Yeah. Because you can see that compared to the other parts of the body, the hands they look very big yeah. and they look out of proportion. Yeah. And not just the hands but even the head. Yeah. The head was measured so that it's slightly out of proportions. So David has big hands and big hands. <laughs> okay. okay. But that's no surprise. I mean, if you think of the story of the Bible, David defeats the giant using the sling, the hands, plus the brain. brain. Ah, because yeah. he's strong, but even smart. Yeah. Of course. Okay, so these are the weapons of David, the hands and the head. Yeah. That's why they had to be bigger, so they would be more visible from the distance. Okay. Ah, don't forget. Oh, I got it. Ah, David was supposed to be placed up yeah. high, at the top of the top, you know? yeah. Yeah, so that's the reason why we see these parts so big, because it was supposed to be placed at the top of the top. Question number eight. So, where was David before moving to Academia Galvez? David was in Piazza della Signoria, outside of the old palace. Which called Palazzo Vecchio? Palazzo Vecchio, exactly. Right. Palazzo Vecchio is the town of Florence now and it's always been so at that time in the 1500s that was the palace of the republic okay. because at that time florence was experiencing a change in the political system the medici family the family who had ruled florence for the past 50 years had been sent away had been exiled the florentines had managed to restore the republic Okay. As we said before, according to the Bible, David is the young boy who defeats the big giant. Yeah. Okay. So you see, in Florence, Michelangelo stated became the symbol of the Republic that defeated the, the big giants of the, the Medici family. Okay. That's the political meaning given to the David. That's why they put it in Piazza della Signoria in front of the palace of the Republic. Okay. the symbol of the Republic in front of the Palace of the Republic yes. and they put it facing southward in the direction of Rome because that's where the Medici's had gone when okay. they had been sent away. Yeah, they want to attack. Exactly. Okay, so you see, David looking at the giant with that threatening look is like David telling the Medici's, don't you dare to come back to Florence. Okay. Of course they came back. Yeah. <laughs> When they came back, Michelangelo was a bit in trouble because not only he had made the symbol of the Republic for David, but he had also reinforced the walls of Florence to prevent the Medici from coming back. So when they did come back, he was in trouble. He had to hide himself in a small room in the church of San Lorenzo okay. because he feared that the Medici could kill him for his betrayal. Yes. Okay. But of course, the Medici, they knew that he was like the best living artist of the time. So they just spread the news, they wouldn't do anything to him. And he could come out working again for the Medici. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was the price he had to pay for his freedom. But of course, they didn't do anything to Michelangelo, not even to the David. Yeah. Okay. David stayed in the square outside for more than 300 years. Really? Can you believe it? He was eventually moved here only in 1873. Without a roof. Without a roof, exactly. Because this space that you see above him, this was built just for the day. When okay. David was already here, yeah. and it has a skylight at the top, so that David would have received the same light it had always received outside in the square, exactly. When the original one came here, it was replaced in the square. By the copy. Okay. So if you go to Piazza La Signoria, you can still see David there. Again, yes. <laughs> no, the original uh, one, the copy. copy. Because yeah. it was the original location. 
interesting stuff. Question number nine. So, is he holding that stone in the right hand side? <laughs> the thing in the right hand is the sling. Sling. And oh. even the thing in the left hand. So the question is, where is the rock? Yeah. The rock is still in the left hand, but you don't see it because it's inside the sling. Okay, there's a pocket in the sling and the rock is loaded inside that pocket. So that's the part that is holding with the left hand, the pocket with the rock. Thank you. Then from his left shoulder, the sling goes all behind David's back. Okay, the sling is made out of leather probably and that's the leather band all behind his back. Yeah. You can see that he gets still the right hand of David, the way he's holding something else. Okay, that's where the sling begins. So that's the handle of the sling. Okay. David is right handed. Okay. okay, this is the moment before he throws the rock. So in this moment, David is still facing the giant. Yeah. Okay. And he's very intelligent because he's hiding the rock. The, the rock, exactly. Yeah. And in this moment, he's still thinking of where to strike him. Okay, that's why he looks so concentrated because he's still looking at the giant. Yeah. And of course, the giant is standing over there on the left. Mm -hmm. okay. Because in Italian, left is sinistra. Okay. And sinistra sounds a lot like sinister, doesn't it? Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, sinistra, left, is where the evil comes from. <laughs> or at least that's what they believed at the time. <laughs> okay. yeah. But that's why the imaginary giant is standing on the left, and that's why David is right-handed. Okay. He's the good guy. Yeah. Okay, so that's why he's holding the handle of the sling with the right, right hand. Oh, interesting story. Question number 10. Was it written in the Bible that David is naked? No, it's not written in the Bible. Okay. It was uh, Michelangelo's decision because in the Bible it only tells that he fights with no armor. Okay. But probably it was when he sat against. <laughs> okay. It was Michelangelo's decision and that's no surprise because if you think of the Sistine Chapel with all the nudes, yeah. if you think of the Donitondo, the painting by Michelangelo in the Uffizi, the main subject in the foreground is the Holy Family. But in the background you can see naked men yeah. <laughs> that have nothing to do with the Holy Family. Okay. Okay. It's the subject that he loved to depict the most. The nude body, especially the nude muscular male body. Okay, okay so okay, then he can show his talents as well. Exactly, because you know, uh, nudity allows to show better the physical energy, the physical power. Okay, yeah. it was the same for the Greeks. Yeah. Okay, if you think of the athletes at the Olympic Games in yeah. ancient Greece, they were all doing everything naked. They were running, uh, they were always naked. Okay, uh, and actually, Michelangelo's David uh, is not like the young shepherd of the Bible. Michelangelo's David uh, is Greek, I would say. Uh, if you look at the Greek nose, the curly hair, yeah. okay, maybe this is like a Greek champion of the Olympic Games. <laughs> okay, because those were the standards of beauty for Michelangelo and generally speaking in the Renaissance. So that's the reason why we see David naked. Michelangelo was very good at depicting the, the human body. Yeah. He had studied anatomy, the human body, yeah. looking at bodies that were dead. Actually looking into dead bodies. <laughs> okay. Because he was dissecting cadavers. Oh. At that time that was a bit illegal. <laughs> because he was forbidden by the church, of course. Okay. Right. Michelangelo could do that thanks to the friars of the Holy Spirit the Church in Florence. They made an exception because they knew that he was very talented. Michelangelo was dissecting cadavers when he was 15 years old. Small kid. <laughs> See, quite a strange hobby for a small kid. Yeah. But of course he knew he had to do that if he wanted to be very precise in depicting the human body. Okay. And he was very precise. Size. You can see that looking uh, at the right hand of David. It's beautiful. We can see all the veins yeah. and the pulsating veins under the skin. Yeah. Uh, even in the arm, on the neck, the whole body is perfect. Yes. So detail. <laughs>
we just came out from the Academia Gallery. It was a great experience. Thanks to Francesca, you have done a great job and I learned a lot from you. And also, if you have learned something from this video, please subscribe the channel and put thumbs up. Uh, again, if you have any comments or questions, please write them in the below so I can come up with the answers with the help of Francesca. I have no doubt that you are a five-star tour guide. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks to you.